So I realize that I teach in Massachusetts and in Massachusetts and like some parts of New England, they use the word paraprofessional, but in other parts of the country, they use different things. They might use a teaching assistant, a special ed assistant. Um, I know in Maine, where I grew up, they call them ed techs, like educational techs, which is weird, but it is what it is. Um, a lot of times people just say para or para educator. Um, or a TA, I mean, there are so many ways to describe that role, but really they just assist the teacher and they're like an added value to the class. Hi guys, so I'm in the corner of my room, but I do wanna get on here and talk about paraprofessionals a little bit. I've had a lot of questions about that since I made a video about two years ago. Um, Paraprofessionals are tricky and working with them can be kind of challenging. And um, when I first started, I had two paraprofessionals and they had both been teaching at this school or working at this school for a long time. And they were much older than me, like twice my age, um, but they didn't have the degrees to back it up necessarily. One of them was a teacher in her previous profession, but not in special ed. And so it was a very strange like dynamic um, to come into, but I want to show you just how I organize my paraprofessional stuff. Um, and then I want to give you, um, I want to give you about five tips to help you with the paraprofessionals to go along with my previous video. If you haven't watched my first video about paraprofessionals, please take a look. I'll leave a card up top. Um, but I want to show you a little bit about how I go about my classroom. You're going to see this is going to be filmed over a few days because I'm not wearing the same outfit. So I apologize, but hopefully it will make sense. So in, right here I have um, one of my paraprofessional stuff and I'll kind of show you how I go about using that. Um, but I keep it organized for her here. Hey, it's Braylon editing right now. I am laughing at myself as I watch this video and cut it all up because I say the word para so many times, like so many times. And I'm still gonna put this video out there because I think that the information is valid, but I just keep laughing at myself as I look through this video. So I'm so sorry, I apologize again, and I hope you push through it, because I think that some of the information is actually super helpful. So thank you, thank you for watching. So this is right behind one of my paraprofessionals, and for every paraprofessional every week, I give them the lesson plan for the week that is that describes exactly what they do. And I also make the copies for them if they lead any small groups or any independent stations. I make sure they have all of the work that they're gonna need each week. And I do that Monday morning before they come in because it just, just streamlines the whole process. And I have these bins from the dollar store and it's I give them five folders, so one for each day. And the copies per day, per subject, are in these folders. And then um, this is like from Target, hold on, oh my gosh. This is from Target, it's like $5. This is the whiteboard that she uses when she does small groups. And I keep the other persons right there. Here is one of my paraprofessional's desks and she does a lot of work from here. She gets a lot of kids and she loves it. And she is also in charge Oh, I'm moving my camera too much. She's also in charge of everything. She's in charge of my daily sheets, any extra copies. She puts out the morning work and she puts the homework in the homework folders. And as you can see behind her, she has, um, she also has another purple thing with the folders in it because that gives her all the work for her whole week. And there's her paraprofessional binder. It has all the procedures, acronyms, lesson plans, everything. In here, I keep letters, pocket charts, sight words, all the curriculum, mini readers, all the large books I hang. I made that little PVC pipe type of thing um, just to keep it all organized. Obviously, hi, there's me. <laughs> but we keep our stuff in here. I'm not going to show you below because it has kids stuff with names. But we hang up our coats here in the winter, me and my assistants. And then one of us will put our bag here, here, and here. So it kind of works out pretty nicely. 
This is a little bit of a mess, but this is my math. So all my math manipulatives are here. So if I teach a group or my paraprofessionals teach a group, they just open the drawer and they can choose what they want. There's chains, there's clocks, there's dominoes, counters, Unifix cubes, base 10, timers, everything. And up here I keep all my extra visual pieces. See, there's a little visual sign. And my Unifix cubes, I guess. <laughs> and then these are extra binders for kids, especially if they need their work propped up for them so that they can write easier. All right, guys, I'm in a different location. I left school because there was a hurricane warning, so I came home, I got in my comfy clothes, and now I wanna talk about paraprofessionals. Working with paraprofessionals is so tricky. And two years ago when I made my video, I was transitioning from being a paraprofessional to being a teacher, and now two years after that video, I feel like I'm coming back on here, and a lot of the things I said in my first video, um, still ring true, definitely, but over the course of two years, I've also learned a ton more that I think is really valuable. So um, I wanna talk about a few things that have helped me in the past couple years to work with paraprofessionals who are older than me, who've been at the school longer, who might know the kids better, who might know the curriculum better. Um, there are some things that I've kind of learned along the way and I want this to be more of like a, a conversation starter. Like if you're a veteran teacher and you're watching this and you have a tip, please comment the tip below. It would benefit some of the viewers to read the comments and to get even more tips and information. So please, please comment below. So I would say the biggest thing, if I have to pick one thing with paraprofessionals, it's to make your expectations very clear from the beginning. And what I mean by that is um, whether you're gonna use a paraprofessional binder, whether you're just gonna have a meeting with them beforehand, I would write down the expectations for them. I would write down their daily duties, what you need them to do, whether that's make copies, ignore certain behaviors, bring a kid for medication, bring them into inclusion, anything. You need to make a schedule and you need to write it down. Um, I print the weekly schedule, like a weekly lesson plan for them. I also print the school-wide weekly schedule and I put that on our fridge um, and I give them each a copy, highlighted the days and most important things. Um, I write down the classroom expectation. Um, some other things I give them might be a snapshot of each kid's IEP, um, what behaviors they might have, how to ignore, what modifications to give them, what subjects they might be teaching, what small groups. I map out the small group for them. Um, I might even give them question prompts. I make sure their materials are all set. Like I, I make the expectation very clear because they're helping me by doing some of the work for me and working with some kids. And because of that, I need to make sure that they know what I need and that they feel prepared and confident for the day. Um, my, at my school, we all report at the same time. So um, if I'm there in the morning, they also kind of have to be there at a certain time in the morning. And it's, it's like maybe half an hour to an hour before the kids come, which is kind of nice. Um, and so we'll set, we'll set up the room. Um, I give them different duties to do on different days. And so it kind of runs pretty smoothly. That would be the biggest thing, making your expectations clear because if you get frustrated easily or you want someone to ignore a certain behavior and they're not, then if you haven't told them exactly what you want them to do with each kid, then they might not know. They might not have a degree in this. They might not really understand it. They might come from a different generation where they're used to treating kids differently. Like, you just have to do that. Um, the second thing I would say is, um, I usually try to give them some information after I go to a training. So if I go to like a really cool curriculum training or a behavior management thing, um, I come back and I share that information with them. I might even type up some of my notes and give it to them because if I'm gonna implement something new in my class, um, I need them to have that information as well. The biggest thing is I've just decided that I'm no longer gonna be intimidated. <laughs> Like, teaching is kind of scary sometimes, and teaching in front of other adults is really scary. And um, 
sometimes when you're teaching a group lesson and you have all these people watching you, the paraprofessionals, different specialists, it can be kind of like intimidating. So um, I've just decided like I'm no longer getting intimidated by this. I'm just gonna go for it. Um, I ask for feedback. I ask them to give me feedback after and not in a mean way, but I wanna create a culture within my room where we're used to giving feedback. Because if I'm asking feedback from them, when they do something, I want them to be understanding that I might also give them feedback. Um, if they handle a behavioral situation in a different way, um, I try to uh, come in afterwards and give them some feedback. Um, and I hope they do the same for me. Um, something else I've learned is to take turns. Like my staff and I will tap out like from different places. So if they're with a kid and that kid is just really sucking the life out of them, um, I'll switch spots with them because they'll know exactly what I'm doing and I'll know what they're doing because they've seen the plans and I've given them everything for the week, all the lesson plans and everything. Um, but I can sense that they're getting a little tired and burnt out by that kid and we switch it up. And um, I think the teacher has to have an equal part in teaching as well as behavior management. Like it can't just be the paraprofessionals or the assistants. Um, so that is something that I find really, really important. The last thing I'll say is that I try to remind them often that I appreciate them and I'm grateful. And it's not necessarily with a gift. It's just like if I see them do something, I'll say thank you. Or like, oh my gosh, that was so helpful that you did that. Or if they make their copies in the morning and, and whatever, like I just, I wanna make sure they know that my classroom couldn't run without them. My job would not be the same without them. Um, and I need them and we're a team and we're not just me sitting there at my desk and them doing all the work it's a team it works together there are flaws there are communication errors but we still make it work and I just am so grateful for them so um, that's kind of how I go about it I hope that was helpful um, I just wanted to share some of the things that I've learned over the past two years um, to kind of make it easier for you um, Working with them is tricky, and I know there are a lot of people that watch my channel that are paraprofessionals, so if you are a paraprofessional, please also write down in the comments what's helpful for you as a, as a paraprofessional and what's not.